Okay, in a previous video, I showed a little booklet that I have prepped for doodling on the go. And some of you wanted to know how I have put it together. So I'm going to show you that. You'll see it's super easy and very quick. And while I was filling out these little booklets, I turned on the camera. So you'll see some of these processes. And at the end, I will give you a flip through of what I have done so far in my five little booklets. I'm starting with six pieces of watercolor paper that measures six by nine inches and I'm going to be scoring them down the middle at four and a half on the long end. So the finished book will be four and a half by six and I'm using a paper trimmer that's equipped with a scoring blade for this. This step is not entirely necessary but it does help uh, in having a beautiful clean edge when you fold the paper. When you do so, uh, make sure that you fold with the bump that is created by the creasing. Make sure that the bump goes inside the fold. We have a tendency to do the opposite. If you don't have a paper trimmer or a scoring blade on your paper trimmer, you can use a stylus. That's this thing that I'm showing you. It has a little ball at the end and you can run this alongside the groove of your paper trimmer or you can just use the stylus and a ruler if you don't have a paper trimmer. When I fold my pages, I use a bone folder that just helps making the crease even sharper. And now it's time to assemble the little booklet. With a paper piercer, I'm going to poke three holes, one in the center and two on each side. It's about half an inch from the edges. I do not measure, so it's about in the middle. You can also use an awl if you don't have a paper piercer. And here's what it looks like. So far, so good. I use Baker's twine to sew the spine and I have measured twice, yeah, twice the length of the spine. And I'm gonna use a large needle to sew everything together. I don't tie a knot at the end of the thread. It's not necessary. So I'm gonna start with the middle hole and I'm going to poke the needle from the inside towards the outside. And as you can see, I'm leaving a tail and I hold on to it. Then I'm gonna go from the inside towards the inside through the hole on the right. And then I'm going to go all the way down, bypassing the center hole from the inside towards the outside on the or through the left hole and then I'm going to go back from the outside through the center hole back to where I started and then I just tie two knots together and we are done very very simple very easy also super effective I have to say, if you're using paper that is uh, greater than 90 pound weight, because I that's what I have used, uh, it's just paper I had that I wasn't using for my regular paintings, you might want to reduce the number of pages. Now, I have also used a an old Fiskars rotary trimmer that's kind of like a workhorse to trim the edges. Uh, really it's not necessary because I personally will use this book to cut around the shapes that I'll be doodling so if that doesn't bother you just leave it uh, although it does make for a cute little book <laughs> when it's all nice and even all right so the idea behind the book is that I would have something to bring with me on the go if I know I'm going to be go going somewhere where I'll have a long wait and I can see this also being very useful if you have young children that are able to draw and uh, for instance you have to go to the doctor or the passport bureau or something like that and you know you're going to wait for a long time uh, it's fun to just uh, get your kids involved let them do the painting beforehand that's what I do I fill in all the pages with leftover paint I have in my palette and I also vary the shapes which is always interesting I have a friend who has decided to do all her Christmas cards in advance and she's going to fill up this book with triangular shapes for Christmas trees so I thought that was a good idea
So up to that point, I pretty much stayed with basic shapes, but on some of the pages, I knew I wanted to doodle some birds and I wanted these birds to be very whimsical. So I went on Pinterest and because I know nothing about birds, I went on Pinterest and I looked up uh, side views and frontal views of birds. And that is the extent of my research. I just kind of like looked and approximately <laughs> painted the shapes that I thought would make a bird. Again, this is very primitive and I, because I was going for that look now, if you want to have something a little bit more refined, go ahead. But for me, the object of this book is just to get me going, just to get the creative juices flowing. And so that's why I kept everything very almost like caricature like you'll see some of those birds are quite funny <laughs> and I had a good time with them so just again prepping the paint um, in you know for future doodling that's that's all it is at this point Before I focus on my own doodling, I just wanted to share some of these photos with you because they are so dear to me. This is my friend Joshua and his grandmother who, Joshua is actually 12 years old and he has done some exercises based on my videos uh, in the past and I was really happy to see that he also picked up doodling which is awesome. And these few last ones are from one of my subscribers and her children and as you can see um, some of them are quite young <laughs> as young as seven years old and this warms my heart it means that uh, not only adults but kids are also embracing doodling it's such a wonderful outlet for creativity and thank you so much for sending me all these pictures I really appreciate that All right, so as you can see, I'm struggling a little bit with this marker, not because it's bad, it's because of the way I wear off the tips of them because I have a tendency to hold my marker perpendicular to the paper. And although there's nothing wrong with that, when you are filming with an overhead installation that uh, it blocks what I'm doing because of the way I hold my pen. So I had to refer to the Muji pen, which I love, but is not permanent, unfortunately, but that was okay. I knew I wasn't going to add any watercolor and that allowed me to hold my pen at an angle so that you can see a little bit more because the pen is a rollerball point and not felt tip. So I am having such a blast <laughs> with these birds. They're crazy and I love them so much. This one is a little bit nerdy on the side and he's probably my favorite. I use these booklets totally as an outlet for what I, what I call shaking my creative sillies out. Anything goes in these books. These are not paintings I'm ever going to sell. It's just for me. And the sole purpose of this is to be... Uh, free in my creative process and you'll see at the end when I will do the flip through that um, some of these exercises start out as being exactly like this very whimsical very free very loose and all of a sudden I was able to see a change I was being a little bit more deliberate I was doodling uh, with more detail, with more assurance, and even to the point where at the end I have created, uh, I've kind of like put together all the elements of that page that I had painted and created a full-on doodle, like the entire page, like um, merging everything together. So in my eyes, when this happens, it's a full-blown success. Also, I don't usually speed up my clips, but I didn't have a choice. Otherwise, the video would have been too long. And I wanted to show you a good variety of the different doodles that I did. So sorry about that. All right. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, and then I'll leave you with some music, is this brush. 
and it coincides also with a question that I have received. So this brush is just awesome for doodling. It's small and it holds a lot of liquid. The question that I was asked was how can you paint for so long before you need to reload your brush? And one of the reasons is that I'm using good quality brushes. Uh, it may sound a bit snobbish, but it does help. You need, first of all, it needs to be a watercolor brush because watercolor brushes are made to hold a lot of liquid. So that of course allows you to paint for longer before you need to reload. The other reason why your paint is a little bit streaky might also be uh, because of the paint to water ratio. And I have been asked this many, many times, could you please do uh, a video on how much water to use in watercolor? And honestly, this is probably the toughest topic to cover. It's hard to explain. It's hard to demonstrate. And for me, it's kind of like a feels thing. I have to, it's never the same. It's, and I have a hard time. I think I would have a hard time explaining this. However, having said this, I'm going to try my best. I feel like I need a little bit more experimenting before I can show you these types of videos, because a lot of what I do is very instinctive. Uh, is that the word instinctive? I think so. Anyways, but um, I promise you I will try my best. <laughs> but I can't promise you when. Oh baby, I love your madness. It's so incredibly beautiful. Oh, you shine like gold, so selfless. In case you need some inspiration, I will be putting photos of some of these pages in a public post on Patreon. And the reason why I do this on Patreon, I've explained before, is because I don't have a website to share documents. Uh, so that is the best way for me to do so right now. And I will put the post in the description of this video. If you are watching on a computer, you just have to click on show more right below the video window and that will open up the description. And if you're watching on a mobile device, there is no show more. Uh, what you'll see is a little uh, down arrow underneath the video window. You just have to click on that and it will expand and you'll be able to see all the information. So as you can see, not all of these booklets have been completed. I will make sure to put one in my purse along with a marker. I do like to go out sometimes after dinner and uh, go art at a park. So I think these are perfect for that purpose. Oh, and that's the painting I created for Patreon as a reward. And as you can see, the birds are a little bit fancier, but these are the ones that have inspired me to go really crazy in my pocket doodler. I think I prefer my crazy birds over this, although I like the painting, but anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it got you inspired to keep on doodling and creating. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below and I will see you soon. Once you've been